Yeah, yeah, Whoa. Wow, well, it's not bad at all. Look at that. Yeah. You turn it into AC if you want. Yeah, that's pretty clean. That's the hell of a power supply. Well, the quality of the output is much better than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for a design from the 1930s and wow. parts from 1953s, you know, we can see when it was built. I think those formula capacitors a little bit more. Yeah, because yeah. of formula capacitors and and the. Mercury is getting in. Okay guys, I uh, really wanted to make that video because I got irritated by people unfairly treating vintage capacitors. Ever since I uh, posted the video of uh, our 1930s vintage power supply with Thyatrons, I got the most stupid and irritating comments like that we should change the capacitors because it's horribly leaking. With, uh, of course, the comments coming from the people that Put the usually the most unhelpful uh, comments on my uh, on my videos, and then everybody jumps on the bandwagon. And so, um, this is the capacitor in question. This is a Mallory 500 microfarad, 200 volts, uh, and here it tells when it was made. It's uh, April 14, 1953. So also the the power supply is a 1930s design. This was one made. This one was made much later. And I have it powered by my dear HP power supply. Actually, this one I am not so dear about it because it has a LCD instead of a LED display, so it's a modern one. At 120 volts dot 04. And the supposedly leaky capacitor is drawing a grand total of 0.56 milliamps, so 560 microamps, uh, which if uh, my calculator is uh, still good, the HP1 of course always the best, 120 volts on 0.56 Five, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. O point o o o five six amps. It has an internal resistance over two hundred kilo ohms. So no, that will not blow my transformer. That will not cause the cyatrons to shut off. Uh, and actually, by the way, to uh, further help this poor capacitor unfairly treated capacitor. Let's change to the microamp scale and see what's happening. And let's, let's stabilize it because when I changed it, it, it didn't get powered for a second. So to, yeah, it draws a little bit more power, a few more microamps when it gets reconnected. And as you can see, it's going down. If I wait an hour, it probably will be 
under 500 microamps. So what's happening is that uh, it's reforming uh, this kind of self-healing. So it's very rare we uh, recap a machine or change capacitors. Uh, our uh, 1401 from the 1950s, it runs on its original capacitor. Thank you very much. Actually, the only uh, device I have recapped entirely uh, is a modern one, is uh, my, uh, the, my Macintosh SE. Every single one of its caps, uh, which dates from the 1990s, was bad. So I've had a lot more problem with new capacitors than with old ones. I was just reviewing my footage on the camera and it's already at uh, 478 microamps. And it's going to get lower and lower. And then if you look at my pile of old parts here, not to say we never uh, have a bad one. That one, actually, that's from a modern device. That's my own NAD amplifier that almost caught fire. So something from the year 2000s. Uh, here are some vintage ones, uh, so the 500 volt DC, 800 microfarad, I changed the two. Uh, one was not leaking but had low capacit capacitance, the other one was good, so why well, I was at it. But, uh, you know, that's about it. Um, yeah, one more over here, no, that's a battery. Um, then I have you no know, few film capacitors, sometimes they go bad. Uh, these were the capacitors from uh, my LED uh, power supply, so ceramic ones. But, you know, uh, capacitors ain't that bad. I know, of course, we, we had the, the, the few, occasional few ones. And, and just to be fair here, we put the modern capacitor here. It's an 80 volts, so I biased it at 60 volts. And no, sure enough, it leaks less than uh, the old one. I am sure uh, the old one in its good old days uh, was uh, leaking even less. But still, no, 140 microamps. And uh, here's another example. Uh, that's a much higher capacitance. This is a uh, 23 millifarads at much lower voltage, 15 volt DC. Uh, from, I don't know how to read the date code, but it's from an instrument that should be late 70s, uh, early 80s. Uh, so I pair it here at 12 volts. And uh, this one I actually changed. Uh, what so it's it has a 900 microamps um, leakage current at relatively low voltage, which I don't like. But what I really don't like is that it's going up. Uh, so this one is going the wrong direction, uh, and uh, I took it out of the machine. So yeah. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, so, uh, please stop the uh, you know, comment on or every time we, uh, we do a restoration that we should recap everything. Uh, that's not helpful and that's spreading a pretty wrong message. And last but not least, uh, there were people uh, who say the reason to change the capacitors was to protect are uh, obviously very fragile transformers here from a uh, possible failure. I know they were say it would burn out, so I guess if the, the capacitor would become a short or something like that. And uh, there are two reasons why uh, this is not a concern. The first one is that electrolytics very rarely fail short. Uh, they tend to fail open. Now it's different from the um, uh, tantalums. Tantalums do fail short. That's actually why you never replace a power supply that was made for electrolytics. Uh, you never replace them with tantalums. 
because you need to design your power supply differently to protect against the um, shorting mode. However, here's a counterexample of one that failed, not fully short, but partially short. However, it was never short enough uh, to cause what the shorting protection is, which is no guess what, no, in the 1930s, they knew that you need to protect your power supply from shorts. At the output, not that much because of the capacitor, but because of user error. So yeah, they had invented the fuse, so this thing is protected by fuse. So in the very weird case that it would fail uh, short, it would very unlikely blow our transformer, but for sure it would blow the fuse. Uh, so we are not worried about uh, that uh, case. And and uh, to terminate on to so finish on a good note here, guys. And uh, we are here to celebrate vintage electronics. So this thing, this is a big fuse. Uh, let me show you this. This is still our model 15s and 19s in repair. But this this is what a real vintage fuse is. I love this, guys. Yeah fits in a lamp socket and you can even see the fuse inside so it's pretty good you can tell right away if it's blown or not so on this good note uh, I hope uh, I won't get too many hate messages anymore on capacitors and on this video and I'll see you on the next one to celebrate the restoration of all that good mechanical stuff actually see you then